and I think that's, uh, I think it, everyone here can relate to it. I think it is the, um, uh, the desire to excel, uh, whether you're in business, sports, uh, it is a competition. We're trying to win customers uh, at Southwest uh, from other airlines. Uh, we're trying to be the best in customer service. We're trying to have the lowest cost. Uh, we're trying to have the, the best career opportunity so we can get the best employees. So the word best shows up often. Uh, and I feel like I've done well if Southwest does well. So um, I, I'm certainly living vicariously now through uh, the company more than anything. but. Uh, I, I think all of us uh, who like to achieve appreciate recognition, and not in the sense that I'm, I'm trying personally to win medals or trophies. I, I don't mean it in that way. But I don't think it would be much fun to do a job or to be a part of a team if you didn't truly like your teammates uh, and if they didn't like mm -hmm. you. So I, I, I think that that's an important aspect of that and, and something, as you well know, the culture of Southwest Airlines is somewhat unique. It is family-like, which implies love. Uh, I think any business to survive, any manager or leader to survive, you have to be prepared to deal with reality as painful as that can be. Uh, the biggest shock, again, in, in my life was 9-11, where, where we were, one day we were seemingly fine as a country, as, a, as an industry, as a company, and then the next day, we were literally grounded. You talk about a mental adjustment. Uh, we didn't know when we were going to fly again. So um, it just, it always helps to be humble. Uh, it always helps to be uh, very well prepared for the unexpected. And it helps to uh, just, just be uh, graceful. Uh, and then just as fast as you can to deal with that reality and, and make adjustments. So in our business, we get more practice at that than I would like to admit. Uh, but uh, it's just a very important trait, I think, to have as a leader. I've always enjoyed people. I've always enjoyed working with people. Uh, I just feel very lucky that I got with a company that truly cares about its people. And it demonstrates it so many ways. In fact, before I came down today, I had a pile of thank you notes from our employees, various employees around the company. And 35,000 people, everybody gets a birthday card. Everybody gets a condolence when something bad happens in their life. Everybody gets a celebration note when something good happens. Um, and people appreciate it. They will take the time to sit down and write me a thank you note because I wrote them a note. Uh, and it, it's just amazing the impact that it has on people. Hi, my name is Jeff Siegel. Um, you've talked a lot today about, you know, the kind of culture and family that Southwest Airlines is. And as CEO, you just talked about how, you know, your responsibility is to set the direction. Um, but as most people know, families aren't always happy. How do you uh, kind of overcome obstacles, people who necessarily don't agree with your direction, and how do you convince them to um, go with you, or do you compromise? That, that, you know, that is a wonderful insight, and I think you, you, you put your finger on it. I think the word family implies that it's, that it's human and that it is not perfect uh, and that people do get angry and they get upset and they disagree uh, and they might not talk to each other for a while as a consequence. So all of those are very real things that happen in the workplace uh, and hopefully for legitimate reasons. And... Um, in a very difficult environment like we have in 2009, that is exactly what is taking place at Southwest Airlines. I have employees who are very upset. They've been used to working a set schedule for 20 years, and we've moved their cheese. They have a different start time. They used to have weekends off. Now we've moved their work to the weekend. Understanding that, you know, an airline is a 24 by 7 uh, lifestyle. So it is, uh, it's a very challenging environment. People want to know why they have to make the change. They want to have the ability to express their view, especially when they deem themselves to be arguably a subject matter expert there. Uh, so I think allowing people to vent is a very important aspect of this. And you hope then that the relationships are strong enough that you can come back together Get all that off your chest and get it behind you. Uh, but uh, people will get in my face, and I let them. 
Uh, now, I don't let them drop the F-bomb, if I can <laughs> be permitted to say that. So there, there, we have to have a, a set of behaviors that we all deem to be acceptable. Uh, but that doesn't mean that you can't be passionate uh, and that you can't speak your mind uh, as long as we deal with everybody in a respectful way. Treat everybody with respect is one of the maxims that we have. Work hard, treat people with respect, and enjoy what you're doing, enjoy w people you're working with. If you can live up to those three things, most people are going to be very successful, I think. One other quick uh, note that was very powerful for me. We have a uh, quarterly leadership uh, meeting with all of our officers and directors. It's about 200 people for Southwest Airlines. And uh, we brought some soldiers in. And uh, it was all about leadership. You know, what, what made an impact on these soldiers? And they were recently returned from uh, Iraq. Um, and to a person, there was probably a panel of six from all walks of life. Uh, it wasn't how smart their commander was. It wasn't how accomplished, how many medals, how, what it, it was all describing how their leader cared for them uh, in a very intense environment. So uh, the word care just keeps coming back uh, to me more, more and more. So uh, if you can do that and truly, sincerely feel it, uh, you couple that with the skills and the desire, I think you've got a really good leader. Let's talk a little bit more about the culture of Southwest, because I think anyone who's flown Southwest will have stories about the employees, the fun, aspect of it. Uh, if you fly at Halloween, people dressed in Halloween costumes. What are you going to wear this Halloween? I don't really know yet. I'm uh, very open for suggestions, by the way. Uh, as, as, uh, as the years go by, after you've done Halloween 24 times, you kind of run, run dry. But I think the number one suggestion on our uh, employee uh, blog is Harry Potter. So I don't know if, <laughs> I don't know if I can pull Harry Potter off. But. I think you'd look really good that, in, the, in that outfit. I think, I, again, I think it is you spend time with people, you treat people with, with respect, you prove to them over what will, will ultimately play out over a long period of time that you're going to be there for them. 9-11, mm -hmm. um, of course, was very traumatic for our country. And the airline industry was front and center to that. The industry was shut down, and we had no idea uh, what the future was going to be of individual businesses. Um, Jeff will remember, uh, Saturday, September the 15th, air airlines were announcing furloughs. This was after September the 11th, four days later. That's outrageous. So what we had decided right then and there was that we were going to do our best to cut our budgets, see what, pa what traffic would return, and that, we may have to do that, but it's going to be the last thing we do. And so that's what I mean. Putting the people first. And you've got to, you're, you're going to have to test yourself to see how much you really mean it. Mm -hmm. And so over 42 years, yeah, I mean, we've had a lot of opportunities to celebrate uh, and take care of each other, and um, it's worked out pretty well. Come to Southwest Airlines, and it is a company that, uh, you know, we fly airplanes every day, and they have to be done correctly uh, in a very disciplined way and have to be done safely. So there's a fine line between trying to nurture people and let them make mistakes. Mm -hmm. So there's some things, you know, this is an odd thing for an airline. You know, there's some things that it's okay uh, to learn that way. In other ways, in other areas, we just, we, we have to have a system right. that doesn't allow for that. But, you know, on the serious side, what also is so uh, noticeable about Southwest employees is they seem to go the extra step, extra mile, seem to go beyond their job description. And I'm going to give you a quick story, just from my experience. I was on a flight from Dallas to Austin that got delayed because of weather. And these poor pilots coming out of Oklahoma got delayed four hours, get into Dallas, delays out of Dallas, take us to, had to go to San Antonio because of weather parked in San Antonio for a while. So a flight that was supposed to get in at 7 is getting in at midnight, 1 o'clock in Austin. And so these pilots had to be exhausted, I mean, what they had been through. But one of the pilots, I think it was the, head, the captain, got off, went out into the concourse, because no one was there anymore, 
found a wheelchair to bring for one of the passengers. That, that pilot could have stayed in the cockpit and no one would have thought anything less of him. But there's something about that culture. How did that come about? Uh, probably hard to explain. Somehow along the lines, uh, or along the way, that kind of behavior was endorsed. It was rewarded. It, there was ex an example of that. Uh, it's a 38-year-old company. Uh, I was 15 years old when I started, so the, the culture was very much embedded when I got there. There were 5,000 employees when I started, so we've, had, we've added how many since then? 35,000 total today, but the culture is still there. So it's an interesting thing to me, and I don't know that I can explain it. Now it would be very difficult, I think, to go in and uh, redact it, to ex extract it, to change it. I just don't know that it's possible. Uh, but we do share those stories. Uh, we do celebrate those kinds of um, events. Um, but it does happen over and over. And you never know in life, you just never know when those opportunities are going to present themselves. Uh, I think one of the more poignant times, of course, for, for all of us, for our country, was uh, September 11th. And what happened, if, uh, if any of you were flying, you, you know what happened, but uh, the entire country was put on the ground in terms of uh, aircraft. So we had employees with customers uh, in places that we don't serve. And they did the similar uh, acts of kindness there where uh, our, our flight crews took out their personal credit cards, put our customers up for the night, bought them pizza, whatever it might take, uh, just so people could then figure out how they were going to get home uh, in the midst of their trip. So uh, those, are kind of, those are the kinds of things that you can't teach. We try to hire people with that kind of heart and that kind of common sense uh, and that kind of caring attitude. Uh, and somehow it's, uh, it's, it's worked all these years. This, and you have a... a company has a great reputation of taking care of your employees. I believe you've never had a layoff yet. Is that correct? The challenge with that would be how do you balance taking care of your employees with your responsibilities to your shareholders for sh their investment in your company? How do you balance that? Well, it's a timely question. Um, you know, my goal for this year was to uh, not necessarily for have, to have Southwest be a hero uh, and turn in a record profit, it was in this kind of environment, we know that business travel will uh, be significantly reduced in corporate America. Uh, and there's really no easy way in the short run to offset that. Um, the, the only thing you can do is uh, keep fares as low as possible to make travel affordable for as many consumers as possible. So it, there's a real danger in a year like this, uh, and especially in, with the worst recession we've had arguably in um, certainly many decades, if not all the way back to the Great Depression, that um, there is a risk of grounding airplanes, uh, having to furlough employees then. And we could, we could have furloughed employees this year. Uh, because we did find ourselves with less flight activity. Uh, but instead, what we've done for the most part is we've done really two things. We've spread the work out among uh, the, the employees that we have. So many employees are actually making less money, but uh, they're preserving jobs. And then we've offered an early, a voluntary early retirement uh, uh, program. So. We had already planned a number of initiatives to try to save jobs in the event that we got to uh, that unfortunate point, and so far we haven't had to do that. So in the end, I think what I would tell shareholders is that without great people, and especially in a customer service business, we, we, we won't have a good company. We won't have good customer service. We won't have the repeat customers. That's what ultimately leads to profitability. Uh, and it's a symbiotic uh, relationship. So uh, it's worked. You know, we're the only airline that's been profitable every year since 1972. No other airline comes close to that. So um, it, it's back to what we were describing earlier, that if we just focus on profits, I don't think that ultimately that is sustainable. But if we focus on having great people, 
offering great customer service, uh, a very reliable, safe operation, all of that combined should lead to uh, great profitability.